Athena thought she'd been successful in finding a corner of the hotel bar to sit alone and unnoticed. It was in the back and obscured by large plastic potted plants and a few plaster columns. She had even ordered a sherry so that the waitstaff would leave her alone with her troublesome thoughts. But fifteen minutes after she sat down, a waiter with a buzz cut came up to her holding a bottle of red wine and two glasses. He placed them on the table as she looked up at him with questioning annoyance. He shot her a grin and announced, Compliments of Mr. Dennis Sidney. Athena was about to protest, claiming that she did not know anyone named Dennis Sidney, when the face of Dionysus appeared over the waiter's shoulder. Oh, do accept, love, he said, pouting his lips. The bottle alone cost over a hundred bucks. Athena sighed. Dionysus plopped himself down in a chair across from her. And we haven't seen each other in so long, he added, handing the waiter a twenty-dollar bill. We've got a lot of catching up to do. The waiter poured the wine and left. Dionysus put his elbows on the table and rested his chin on his knuckles. You're not glad I found you. I was looking forward to some quiet time to think, she answered evenly. Dionysus waved his hands. Think, schmink, you can do that any time. Dionysus reached over and took one of the glasses. We're all here to be together, one big, happy, incredibly dysfunctional family. He took a swig of the wine. So, sis, what's new with you? Athena ignored his humor. Dennis Sidney, is that your name now? Dionysus shrugged. Today, it's son one of my passports. <laughs> Not my favorite, but the one that works best in America. Athena watched him take another drink. Have you been here long? A week or so. Came early to catch some shows. I wanted to see cats, but it's gone. I had heard it's been around as long as we have. Even that is changing. You still in Froggy Land? Athena had learned centuries ago that the best way to carry on a conversation with Dionysus was not to acknowledge his infantile side. Eventually, he would tire of it. No, Britain, she answered calmly. Oh, Britain, he mimicked. What do you do for fun there? I run a publishing company, Athena replied. Dionysus sat back and laughed. What is so funny, she demanded. Dionysus shook his head. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. It sounds completely respectable and suitable. And yourself? He waved his hands again. I've been here and there, mostly Asia recently. He gulped the last of the wine, savoring the final sour mouthful before swallowing. Bring anyone? Athena looked down. No. But you would have liked to have. Athena looked at him and opened her mouth. She started to ask him a question, but thought better of it. She probably could not count on him to be serious anyway. There's a beautiful girl in Singapore I came this close to bringing, Dionysus continued. Her big trip to an American city and all that. But I really eh, couldn't be bothered in the end. A short silence fell between them as Dionysus poured himself another glass of wine. He held it under his nose and sniffed the bouquet. Athena decided to take a chance. Tell me something, Dee. She selected her words carefully. Do you think that evil exists? Or that there is no such thing and only our perception creates the illusion of evil? Dionysus stared at her blankly for a moment before breaking into loud hysterics. Athena raised her voice above his. I'm being serious. I know, I know, Dionysus replied. You always are. No, I'm not. Besides, it's a simple question. With no simple answer. Dionysus leaned back and rested his bent elbow on his chair. Where's all this coming from, then? I've been thinking about it for a long time. Have you? And I keep coming back to it. Well, I don't think it really matters much. Of course it matters, Athena snapped, pressing her lips together in anger. How can you say that? Dionysus raised his hands. Hey, if I've learned anything, it's you shouldn't ask questions like this. 
And when you do, suddenly the arguments start going around and around in circles. Must there be good for evil to exist? Can somebody's good be evil? Is there ever a difference? Athena leaned forward. But horrible, horrible things that happen for absolutely no reason to people who've never harmed anyone. Are you talking about evil or injustice? Athena thought a moment. Both. Injustice is evil. Dionysus shook his head slowly from side to side. The universe is unjust. That doesn't mean the universe is evil. Athena's eyes narrowed. She contemplated the paradox. Dionysus pulled his chair closer to the table. Listen, says, he finally said, reaching over and placing his hand on hers. A long, long time ago, I was in Austria. There was this incredibly handsome kid. He was kind and sweet and opened his house to me. He gave us money away to poor people. He supported us only with his farm. He had no enemies. But that didn't stop a group of bandits ambushing him on the road to town one day. They clubbed him to death and dropped his body down a well. Athena noticed Dionysus' voice had grown steady and grim. He continued, He was one of the best human friends I've ever had. And even I couldn't save him from dying a horrible death. Was that evil? I don't know. It was certainly unjust. Athena sat still. Her gaze fell on the table. I've known a lot of good humans that have died unjustly as well, and who will die, eventually. Dionysus cleared his throat and sat back. That's what humans do best. They die. He pulled his wine glass closer. Her eyes rose to meet his. And we're left behind. Is that just? Dionysus smiled broadly. See, he said raising his glass. That's why we shouldn't ask questions like this. 